Hey everyone, it's Emily the Fangirl. If you are new to my channel, I talk about what it's like being an expat here in Singapore as well as what it's like to work here in tech. I want to talk about the small like quirky things I found here in Singapore, things that you can consider as like culture shock. So here are the culture shocks I've experienced here in Singapore as a US expat. Number one, I think for most of my viewers who have watched my videos and for those who don't, um, you might not know that I am a social drinker. So uh, not that I'm like, you know, getting wasted every night, but I do drink socially. So I think for me, like what is really relaxing after a day at work is like having a glass of wine or like sitting outside with my friends chatting over a glass of wine. <laughs> so I'm very much into that like happy hour, uh, having drinks after work type of um, social circle. Like that's what I like to do. It's just a nice way for me to unwind. And when I got to Singapore, I was like, holy it's very expensive it's very expensive to buy alcohol here so like in comparison like if you're buying a seven dollar wine bottle maybe like a cheap wine that you can get in in the u.s it's seven dollars here it most likely be around like 25 to 30 dollars and so that kind of just like blew my mind i was like dang like wine or alcohol is you know quite expensive and if you go to a really nice bar the prices are comparable or even more than some of the prices um, you would pay back in san francisco and that's already at like a surplus coming here i've definitely had to like adjust a little bit more i still drink socially but not as often as i used to back in the u.s instead of going out and drinking at restaurants friends will come over to my place we'll have a bottle of wine or i'll go to their place and we just chat and have a bottle of wine so same concept it's just that we're not doing it at restaurants anymore because we're trying to be frugal and we're trying to save money here <laughs> one thing that was really interesting too is that you cannot buy alcohol after 10 30 p.m i think it's something that I found out the hard way because I was off to like an event and I needed to get some drinks and I was checking out and the guy was like hey like you can't buy alcohol after 10 30 p.m and it was really embarrassing because I didn't know and I didn't want to be like oh my god like she's trying to break the rules but yeah I genuinely didn't know and then I was like okay noted I'll always buy beers or things earlier interesting too so like if you're in Fair Park or like Little India area uh, they actually don't sell alcohol after 7 30 p.m um, and I I also found this out recently because I was trying to buy beer and they had closed it all off. If anyone knows, let me know because I thought it was interesting that they prohibited it um, after 7.30 p.m. Um, but these were just at like grocery stores. And then the other thing I was thinking too, does this apply like if you go to the clubs? I'm pretty sure if you go to the club, uh, like you know, pre-COVID, you could probably stay out and still drink. I'm assuming, but maybe it's just the actual transaction, like the sell, the selling of the alcohol cannot be bought at a grocery store or at like a at like a physical location. So that's what I'm assuming. The other thing that was really funny too is um, I think I have a few friends who do smoke cigarettes and I think what was shocking to me was like, when you look at the packet, it just has like lung cancer on it. And I was like, whoa. Um, I think it's a really good way for the government to dissuade smokers. If you go to like an office building, there's always a square where people are supposed to smoke within that square. And it's always really crowded and like filled because when I'm walking at like Somerset or um, even around like where I work or um, where I live, there are a lot of people just kind of like smoking cigarettes. And I don't personally smoke, but I thought that was quite Quite interesting and um, I do think that the government tries to dissuade their people to participate in like drinking heavily or smoking heavily as a good government should honestly because all of these things are not good for you if you do it too often generally just want to keep their people healthy so I am assuming that like the reason why all of this is so expensive is also because of the idea of like sin tax like, smoking drinking all of this is at a high price and I think it's definitely to dissuade people to doing it. This one's kind of funny because my friend pointed it out to me and I thought it was like pretty awesome but kind of random. It is these like salmon vending machines. So here in Singapore, if you stumble upon one, you most likely will be like, what? Like, what is this? I remember I was like walking to work and then there was like a salmon vending machine. So it actually sells like Norwegian salmon, which is frozen. And if you want to buy it, you can buy it from a vending machine. I have not tried it yet. Um, I'm not really sure if it's a very popular thing amongst Singaporeans, but you guys let me know because uh, I mean, I do feel like it's quite helpful if you're looking for something to make, but it's also random because when we think of like vending machines, we think of like snacks and like ice cream, like things that are not frozen salmon. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll try it 
and just see if the quality of the salmon is good. I don't know, maybe I'll just stick to fair price and cold storage. This isn't really a culture shock thing, but I thought it was something fascinating that I've noticed. So amongst my colleagues and my friends who are Singaporeans who have studied abroad or work with a very global team, I've noticed that a lot of them are really good at code switching. So um, I do think it's because the nature of their job, it requires them to work with such a segmented market here in Asia. So you need to get along and like speak to people from like Indonesia, Vietnam, um, Australia, the US, right? It's just such a melting pot here. And I've noticed some of my friends, like when they're speaking to clients or people who are non-Singaporeans, they definitely speak in a way where it's like neutralized and you can kind of see like, oh, okay, they have like this interesting like tone that they take on um, to help the other party better understand them. And then when they're with their Singaporean friends, they completely just like code switch to like Singlish. So it's really funny. And I think that's quite admirable that they can like code switch so quickly because for me, like, I think I've tried to do it with Singlish or with Singaporeans it's really hard because I think for me, I just, I only know how to speak American English. <laughs> but yeah, I do think that, um, they have that advantage because they get to work with so many people from all over the world. And I do think Singaporeans are becoming more and more globalized, especially since, I mean, you come to Singapore, there are people from all over the world and yeah, they just really develop that advantage. This one's interesting because I've actually never gone to a wedding in Singapore, but I have heard that if you go to a wedding in Singapore, you should look up the price of your seat on the hotel. And that is because weddings in Singapore Singapore are really expensive. Banquet style dinner, it is really expensive. And I think it's just like out of respect, you would go and figure out how much it costs the couple so that they don't end up like in debt after their wedding. Um, but I think that was interesting for me because I've never had to like go online and look for the price to pay them back. I think generally in the US we have registries. So you see what you want to get them. It's like basically like a list of things that they want and you can contribute money to those funds or you can buy them like a microwave, a table, I don't know, like random things that they have on their registry. A friend who said that she she didn't know that and she actually gave less um, and I think she felt really bad afterwards but um, do take note I think you know anyone who is going to a wedding in Singapore like you should look up online what they're going to be paying for your seat and I think it's just like out of courtesy it's very much the norm here in Singapore so my friend said that the elderly here it's good for the elderly to be out and about like moving doing like certain jobs because for me like when I go eat at hawker centers or I you know go eat at like food courts a lot of the people who are like busting the tables and cleaning the tables are um, older uncles and aunties and some of them like I'm honestly like afraid I'm like oh like should you be working like you should be resting or kind of um, just like being retired um, but my friend said that it's actually good for them to kind of be like up and about moving and grooving having friends that they work with things like that so I'm not really clear if they are working because they need the money or they're working because it's good for them to like go out and about. I think it just makes me sad because I also have grandparents who are quite older. And I mean, to be honest, like I wouldn't want them to be working at that age. I would want them to be like surrounded by their families and um, watching TV and just like kind of relaxing. Because I do think that like doing these service jobs, it's not easy, it's not. And I think that's why we have to be very respectful to our uncles and aunties that are helping cleaning so like for me and my friends like whenever we eat i always make sure that we stack up the plates so that's very like clean and organized for like the aunties and uncles to like carry if they if they need to or like i will bust my own dishes and i'll bring it to the place so i mean i definitely do like these little things to kind of help them out because regardless like they are doing hard jobs and we should really respect them and help them out if we can because you know that might be like my grandma and my uh, grandpa so let me know in the comments below what your thoughts on are on this because i do agree too like it might also be good that they're walking to work they have a sense of empowerment they're working they're bringing money in they get to be around people really dependent on like the perspective that you take on this oh and the other thing too, I've seen a lot of the elderly give out pamphlets, like flyers, in the hot sun. So if you're walking by, take a pamphlet. Like honestly, I, it takes like two seconds to just take the pamphlet. I've always been taking the pamphlets from them because I know they're standing there for hours hand, trying to get rid of these like flyers. So um, I mean, if you can help them, just take a flyer and they can go home earlier. Just my two cents. This one's funny because I think it's just 
the American in me. So like, um, I definitely, I'm the kind of person who says like, oh, how was your weekend? Like, how are you? I do these kind of like formalities. Some of my coworkers are kind of like, oh, like they were kind of like taken aback when I would ask them these questions because it's not really in their norm to be asked, to be asking about their weekend and like, how are they? Um, I think in the beginning, they're probably like, why does she talk so much? Or like, why is she asking me these questions? But yeah, I mean, I think they, they've gotten used to it and we always kind of just do a little bit of small talk before we start our day and I think for me that's how I get to know my teammates like that's how I get to know them as people to me like as an American it's also like just a sense of acknowledgement because you're just like hey like how are you like that is a sense of acknowledgement whereas I think like in the US if you ignored someone when they walk into the office that's kind of rude like you don't even acknowledge them like yeah so um, that was really interesting to kind of like see the other thing that I would say too is people generally don't really want to talk to strangers and that's totally fine I think people have been quite receptive though for me when I ask questions like for instructions or I ask them oh like how's that food like blah 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 and then when they hear my accent they're like okay she's not from around here let me help this woman out they've been quite nice to me um, um, but they definitely like I think at first glance they're like oh are you an insurance agent <laughs> which I heard that's kind of like a thing people are always kind of wary about what they're gonna be sold about I can assure you I am not an insurance agent I am probably just wondering where you got your boba and you know where you got your food from <laughs> so but yeah I mean most people are really nice they're very helpful whenever I ask questions there was one Singaporean girl I was talking to my friend asking where I can get sriracha sauce and she just kind of chimed in and she's like oh actually you know you can get it here and blah 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 and we had a nice conversation with her so another thing that was really interesting to me was understanding the different like global communities here so surprisingly I don't really know that many Americans here and maybe it's for a reason too like I didn't come to Singapore to meet more Americans but I definitely have found uh, large community groups that are quite interesting like the French community here there is a huge French community here and I stumbled upon this one group it's called La French Tech Singapore and it is this like community of French entrepreneurs and executives and they're just a very tight-knit group and it's quite incredible because I just feel like they live within their own communities here in Singapore and someone told me that I think Serangoon is the area that they are mostly in because of the international French school I know that there's also a lot of Australians, obviously, people from the UK. So yeah, I mean, not that that was like a big culture shock to me, but I thought it was fascinating to see Singapore become so globalized. Like for some reason, I thought it would be a lot more diverse in the terms of like a lot of Southeast Asians being here in Singapore, but I didn't know that there would be so many like French communities, German communities, like British communities, like things like that. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention was when I was living in Somerset area, we always had red for dengue fever. So that was actually really terrifying because I always thought that every mosquito bite I got when I was living in Somerset would actually result into like, I don't know, me getting dengue. So that was kind of alarming and I'd always spray myself with um, bug repellent. But yeah, that sign just reminded me of that. <laughs> Another thing I noticed was that usually construction sites have a wall and they always add something that resembles like a forest. I don't know, I just felt like it was a really nice touch and quite thoughtful. Yeah, I mean that's really just like my two cents or like these like big culture shocks that I've had in Singapore. I hope this video was interesting. I want to create discussion around um, what I just talked about. So do let me know about your personal thoughts. If you're an expat in Singapore, like how you feel about everything I've just said. And if you're Singaporean, I've also like to know like what you're thinking as well. And I'm sure these thinkings will range from like generation to generation. So let me know what you think. And I hope this video was interesting. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, that's fine too. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, please subscribe to my channel if you want to stick around. Have a great day and talk to you all soon. All for the Chanel.